All right, class, what's going on? Welcome to week number four. That is right, week number four of your reference services and sources class. As always, I am your professor, Dr. Jace K. Austin, and we are going to do another very, very quick one. Um, another week with full activities and full steam ahead. So uh, that means that the heavier content that is going to require longer videos, if you all are willing to sit through them, is going to have to come a little bit later. We're going to do another quick run through and just probe of one of our uh, resources that we offer here at Mizzou. And this is also offered by a lot of public libraries. And I am going to tell you why I am even bother bothering showing you this resource and this resource is called learning express library so if you are not familiar with it you may want to get familiar with it because there is a lot of neat stuff in there let's get into it pause now before we even get into uh learning express library of course we've got to do the course updates and i am going to do the course updates for you now or at least i'm going to you know course announcement announcements updates the good of the order, whatever you want to call it. We've got to do it. We've got to do it first. So let's get it done. And then we will take a look at Learning Express Library. So here we are in the course. And there were a few announcements that I had to issue recently. You have seen the announcements probably by email, but I will also speak on them for a little while right now. Uh, first of all, your virtual reference practice and paper assignment partners have been assigned. So you should see yourself on this list for this assignment here, uh, or for this announcement here. You have Tamara and Kayla and Lauren and Jordan and so forth and so on. And everybody should be assigned a partner. So if you are not assigned a partner, then you need to let me know by contacting me at austinj at missouri.edu, any place, anytime, any town, and I will get back to you and fix your lacking partner situation. However, if we do not have lacking partners, then who you are with is who you are with, and you need to go ahead and make contact with that person so you can start getting the assignment done. I tried my best to get people kind of close to each other where I could. That, of course, worked out better in Missouri than it did in other places, uh, especially when it comes to here. We have somebody from Alaska and somebody from Hawaii. I didn't know who else to pair you with. I was trying to get you all into the same time zones, if nothing else. If you live in the same town and want to meet up in person, please, by all means, do so. In fact, that can go a long way as far as networking and creating friends, which is what I want you all to do. We do have one group of three, and that group of three, uh, Megan, Taylor, and Lauren, what I recommend is that you all rotate so that, uh, like for instance, if you're Taylor, then you can be the librarian for Lauren and the patron for Megan, and then kind of rotate it that way. So hopefully that'll work out. But if you are having difficulties with your partner or with getting this assignment done, again, contact me, austinj at missouri.edu, and I will see what I can do from there. Now, um, the way to get in touch with your partners, because I'm a little curious myself about Canvas and its ability to facilitate messaging other students in the class. So if you are unable to do that, then, of course, I have the directory link here. I am not going to look one of you up, but it would work the same if you put in the name Austin, for instance, if you were looking for me. And again, I'm not going to put anyone's contact information up on this video. But if you were looking for myself, then huh, I'm not the only Austin. I always thought I would be. Uh, so we've got some students who share my surname, and that is awesome. Or maybe not students. We, uh, we've we got a nurse here that shares my surname. But anyway, as you can see, Austin Jason. Um, you see the UMKC address. I actually have both, and you can email me at either. They go into the same inbox. But this is how you would reach me, and I would like for you to reach out 
and email your partners and get the ball rolling. That assignment is due. When is it due? Is it October the 6th? I think it might be October the 6th, but if I say that, then it won't be October the 6th. And so we are going to see that, no, I was indeed wrong. The assignment is due on October the 4th. So your assignment prompt is here, your rubric is here, and the assignment will be due on October the 4th. So if you go ahead and get started now, you should be looking pretty in plenty of time to turn the assignment in on time. Another announcement that I made, and I apologize for this. So basically what happened, there was a, an assignment for those of you who may have friends who have taken this 7314 course in the past. We did have what we called a reference interaction report assignment that uh, required the students to visit a library in person and get some reference assistance. With COVID going on, that is not always doable. And quite frankly, if you want to stay inside because of COVID, how on earth can I blame you? I can't. I really can't. I just can't. So having said that, I phased that assignment out, as did Kenny in the other section, and we ended up needing to make up the points elsewhere. So what happened was I originally only required 30 questions on the final source exam slash semester long project, and that would have only added up to 15 points. I need this assignment to add up to 20 points. So you will be required to answer 40 questions, not 30. And I apologize for that inconvenience, but the questions have not changed, okay? Now, I am seeing that quite a few of you have uh, gone on ahead and da, da, da. quite a few of you have gone on ahead and done the unassignment, the database unassignment. But I do want you to know that the date, the due date for this assignment, which will be your first assignment, is coming. It is due September 20th. In other words, it is due Sunday night. Quite a few of you have already done this, but if you have not done it, remember to do it soon. And those of you who have done it are following the format correctly. So if you are curious about the format, if you don't understand that the format is starting here at database and going all the way down to of note, then you will see that your, your uh, classmates have followed this exact same format, done it very well. This is Ashley, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give Ashley that little like there so that she knows that she did a good job and will be getting her five points recorded soon. And all of your database assignments are here in a comment right under the prompt. So I don't want to necessarily hear anyone say that they don't know how to find their database assignment. They are all listed here. And there are a few updates. So like, um, I think Mary may have joined the class a little bit later. So I assigned her up to date and she can look that up. And all of you can look up what you need to know there as well. And please know that the reason I made this a discussion prompt is so that you all can learn from each other. So one thing that I'm hoping you all will do next week, if you have the time, next week, all of you should have your assignment up, okay? So that means that if you come back to this space later on, you can find out about these databases, learn a bit about them, and you can learn about them due to the work of your classmates. This is cooperative learning, and that, I feel, is empowering to students. So, you know, meet me halfway there. Okay, it'll probably take me about 15 minutes to talk about Learning Express Library, so this will probably be about a 25-minute video. Let's get it started. Pause. Okay, so let's get into it from the University of Missouri homepage. What in the world? Okay, I'm sorry that that happened and not sure how it happened, but let's try this again. From the, from the Missouri University of Missouri Library's homepage, Let's go to looking for a database and let's go to E, which is the wrong choice. Sorry, it's late. Let's go to L for Learning Express Library. 
I don't know how Dr. Jace got an E from Learning Express Library, but just be patient with him. Be patient with him. Pray for him if you got to. But we are going to go back in here, Learning Express Library, and we will be brought... Am I going to have to pause this while it loads? I'm going to pause this because it's taking a long time to load. Okay, this database is being glitchy, and that's not what I need right now, but it's what... This is the database we were going to look at because it's a database that I can get through relatively quickly. So I'm sorry that uh, it's being glitchy. As you can see, I've actually had to log in. I work for both UMKC and for Mizzou, and I am under my UMKC login because the Mizzou login was not working at all. I am hoping, hoping very much so, that I will be able to go through this database very quickly um, just show you, tell you what it does, tell you why you might need it, and then from there, um, you're welcome to do your own self-exploration. This is the only way you are going to get good at reference, folks, is to do your own self-exploration and practice on these databases. But here's a thing about learning Express Library. So, for the rest of your library careers, whether they be 10 years long or 40 years long, because I'm sure I've got some people in this class that are 21, 22, who will go into professional practice at 24 and not retire until 68. You're going to be a librarian for a long time. So um, one thing that I would say about uh, librarianship is that Librarians are always talking about things they didn't teach us in library school. And there are just so many things that they don't teach in library school. Now, I'm going to tell you why we can't teach you everything in library school when it comes to reference. So a lot of students just want to be told, teach me how to do reference. They want to just uh, be able to do it. They just want library schools to teach them reference and then they can go into a library and be reference librarians. And that is not how it works. Take it from somebody who has worked at several different types of libraries as a librarian. Um, and just to name the types that I've worked at. So I have worked for a research institution as a library, as a um, public services librarian. I have worked at an inner city public library. I've worked at a community college library. I've worked at a comprehensive teaching university, four-year university uh, library, which was different from the research library. And now I'm at UMKC, which is kind of a commuter campus, but it's a commuter campus with a lot of graduate programs and a lot of heavy duty stuff going on. Uh, UMKC doing reference there has been much harder than doing it anywhere else that I've ever done it. Um, the community college was probably the easiest, but it was also what I found the most rewarding because I was helping mostly working class students, ex-cons, single mothers. Those are the types of folks I grew up around. So, you know, this this R1 stuff is kind of different to me because I didn't grow up like that. But anyway, putting all that aside, I'm just going to let you know every last one of those institutions required a very unique skill set for pulling off effective reference, okay? And so I can't just tell any of you how to do reference broadly because it's going to differ no matter where you go, okay? But having said that, one thing that you need to know is that um, you need to know, and this is, again, one of those, they don't teach you this in library school stuff unless you got Dr. Jace, and then Dr. Jace is going to talk about it. But one thing that you will notice, particularly if you go into a public library, is that certain materials just are not, the libraries are just not able to keep them, okay? Um, some of these resources include um, GED and uh, GRE and SAT and all of these test prep books, nursing exam books, all of this stuff. Public libraries in particular have a notoriously hard time keeping these materials. People check them out, never bring them back. And these are very sought after materials. So if you run into that, have no fear. If your library subscribes 
to learning Express Library because you can get some of that work here. So when you come into Learning Express Library, you are going to see some broad categories, but one thing that you will probably learn to do in a pinch very quickly is just search for what you need. Now, I am actually going to go into some of these uh, categories very quickly to show you what they are. College admissions test preparation is probably what you're going to use Learning Express Library for the most. So let's say you have a student, a high school student who comes in wanting to take the SAT and wanting to prepare for it. Um, and you don't have your SAT prep books on your shelves at your library. So here's what you would do. You would, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go to college admissions test preparation. And I am going to go to prepare for your essay for your SAT. You can also do the ACT and PSAT and all these other things, AP exams. Uh, for those of you who took AP classes, uh, Dr. Chase was just not on that level, but that's all right. I still ended up doing okay for myself. So um, you can select prepare for your SAT test and you have this. So what you have here, you have some introductions uh, and tutorials and you have them for, um, so these are tutorials for You've got a reading tutorial, a math tutorial, you've got the essay part. Um, ebooks, they do have an ebook that you can access uh, if you know you will have to register. The thing is, though, that if you um, registering for um, Learning Express Library is free so long as you are a member of that particular library, okay? So you would create an account and then you would be able to actually access all of these when you're logged in, save your login information, encourage your, encourage your patrons to create these accounts if they're going to be using Learning Express Library for anything. And then also tell them that uh, the accounts that they create, there's no third parties going on because these are library resources. Um, their logins will be protected, their identities protected, their privacy protected, all of those good things, okay? And then you have the practice test here. So you can do the tutorials and then you can do the practice test. And then for math specifically, they do have ebooks. So this can be very useful for students who are trying to prepare for these various things. And you have similar things going on for the ACT. Uh, so we can click for the ACT here and uh, you even you have an ACT test preparation ebook. But if you click this link and you're logged in again, I'm not logged in um, and I'm not going to log in right now because quite frankly, what you should probably do is create an account yourself and then go in and look at this yourself. OK, but if you if I were logged in and I click this link, then I would be able to access the ebook um, options here. OK. And so it's good to take the practice test too. You can see what you got wrong. Um, I think it actually saves your scores and things of that nature. And so that's what the, uh, that's the main, I would say the main usage of the Learning Express Library is in order to do these practice tests. And I will also say that this can come in handy for some career, um, like for some career things as well. I'm trying to find the nursing. Yeah, the nursing was very popular at a community college that I used to work at because um, a lot of the students at that community college were nursing students. So you can do career preparation and you can come here to, for instance, prepare for nursing exams and you would be brought to this page. So um, we would have practice exams again, ebooks, flashcards, um there are i don't see tutorials necessarily with this one but the practice tests and the ebooks are probably going to go a long way as far as you know your uh your preparation there you may not necessarily need the ebooks so you can also uh we've got law enforcement here we've got military we've got real estate we've got teaching uh, what is teaching? Is that the practices? Yes, you've got the practices here. Um, 
not all of the states are very well represented, but you do see that we have prepared for a Missouri exam here if you are a Missouri person and so forth and so on. So you have these various options here. Um, again, going home, another one that you might want to look at is we have the school center, the college uh, student center, adult core skills, computer skills. Let's look at some of these just really quickly. Again, I'm going to try to keep this at a um, at a reasonable length. We've got to keep this under 30 minutes. Um, so computer skills, popular software tools. This has actually also been rather popular uh, for some people and some of my past experience. Now, I'm sure that there are more recent versions of these Microsoft offerings than the Excel 2016 and the Microsoft 2016. But again, if you, and especially for Excel, because I know a lot of people need to use Excel, myself included, and a lot of us just suck at Excel. So if you want to learn Excel, then uh, even if we don't have the most current version on there, uh, you can definitely enroll for free again in this uh, course that teaches you how to use Excel 2016. And you would start with the basic and then go to the intermediate and beginner. And it should take you, these are approximate times. So for the advanced stage, it'll probably take you about six hours to complete, but give it a shot. And popular software tools, yeah, we do have these Microsoft offerings, but I think there are also some, um, some Adobe offerings Actually, they might be here. Yeah, so you have Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop here, and you have those offerings. So keep those in mind. Um, again, we're going to go into really quickly for the school center. Um, this is useful, uh, especially if you go into children's librarianship. And these can cover a wide variety of subjects. I think you have the most subjects actually in middle school as opposed to high school. But you can come in here and you can go into middle school, for instance, saying you can get math skills, prep, English prep, social studies. Actually, maybe high school does have the most because I think high school also has science offerings. Yeah. OK, so I was wrong. I apologize. So you do have your biology and chemistry and earth science practice. I don't see physics and that's what I could have used it the most for. But you can go into any of these. And again, when you go ahead and create your account, you can actually go in there and see how it works. I would love to do that for you all right now. But quite frankly, I need to keep this video kind of short. So it's going to take self-exploration, folks. And that is something that I just can't drive home enough. Um, college students, if you need these, I wonder if they have physics here. No, they just have chemistry and biology. But these are going to be more on the collegiate level. And so it definitely, if you're <laughs> uh, trigonometry and calculus, I, I only got up the trig, folks. So to so those of you who got up to calculus, congratulations. I took trig. I struggled. I think I got a C in trig in high school. And then I took college algebra and got a B in that. And Dr. Chase was done. But uh, statistical stuff, that can be very useful, especially if you are going to be doing any form of social science research, which a lot of librarians do. Um, and then the adult core skills, uh, these include, yeah, the, the becoming a US citizen thing. So a lot of public librarians will deal a lot with uh, people who are not, uh, who don't have citizenship. Uh, you have to be very careful about the language you use around this topic, especially during these days. But um, so if you're dealing with a permanent resident, then who is trying to pass the citizenship test, they have some options here. But you can actually also look into becoming a better reader, building your math skills, so forth and so on. Um, and finally, before I just use the search button really quick, I am going to tell you all. Uh, so I do review. Um, I'm part of the. Um, admissions committee and so I do review resumes and my resume isn't perfect but I've seen some really bad resumes that people do not need to graduate from this program with resumes that are that bad so if you are looking to build a great resume 
again, this is very useful and also a cover letter because you all will be writing cover letters and resumes and trying to get library professional jobs very soon. The last thing I'm going to show and then I'm going to leave it up to your own exploration is if you were just at the home page, you can also, because for instance, there's not an easy way to find GRE materials if you have to take the GRE. So what you would do is just search. You would search, GRE would come up, and then you have a breakdown of the various things that you may be able to use. Um, there are a lot of practice tests showing up, but I guarantee you those are not all GRE practice tests. But you have tutorials, you have eBooks, um, computer courses, articles, and just try to find what would work with you. Um, as you can see, yes. Yeah, so when I put in GRE, it's looking for great cover letters and stuff like that. So this isn't the most powerful or the best search interface. So you would actually have to do a little bit of digging in order to get to, okay, you've got GRE vocabulary review, GRE test tutorial, uh, test preparation. Let's see if there is an ebook. Um, let's see if I can unclick all of these and see if a GRE test prep book comes up. If so, that would be very great. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So you have a GRE general test prep ebook that's an option here. And so that is miraculous and amazing and a great. So this is another thing you might want to do. And so maybe let's see what happens if I do a search for physics because we didn't see physics when we saw biology and chemistry earlier. Um, no. All right. So it's not perfect. It's not exhaustive. It is not all inclusive, but it is a good place to start and definitely a tool that you should have in your toolbox. So, OK, let's definitely keep it under 30 minutes. We have succeeded in doing that. I'm Dr. J's Peace and Grace. Love y'all. Peace out. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll see you next week. Bye.